Hello and welcome to Ligna Journal coming live here from Ligna. Today's topic is processing composite and plastic materials and joining me today are Peter Martin from Weinig, Wolfgang Stadi from Marka, Jacek Pigosch from Biese and Henna Niemeyer from ESO. Welcome and thank you for joining us today. Plastics and composite material manufacturers often use woodworking machinery. Mr. Martin, what special requirements are there? Well, we have a whole host of different requirements. On the one hand, we have material properties like static charge that of course we don't have in wood. So we have to solve them with completely new solutions for plastics. But we also have really simple things like the fact that plastics can be malleable. So that also means we have to develop new methods to hold them, to feed them and of course, and I think my colleagues will talk about this in more detail, Detail, the actual machining of them. So new methods have to be developed. Mr. Pigosch, what do you have to consider if you want to sell machines to plastics manufacturers? Well, what is very important is that plastic is very sensitive to changes in temperature, to being machined. It deforms easily and the surface is also sensitive. All of those challenges have to be solved. Mr. Stadi, what challenges do you see there? Plastics manufacturers are generally a little more demanding than typical wood customers. So we have to respond to that. For example, clamping, but also after-sales service, machine availability, production data analysis, or even the integration of handling systems like robots or loading systems. The customers are somewhat more demanding than we were used to. A very good topic, we'll come back to the various sectors later. Mr. Niemeyer, your company manufactures tools. What special requirements are there there, especially if you sell tools to plastics manufacturers? Well, it's a fact that processing high-pressure laminate requires a higher cutting power, so the tools have to be more robust. That means the requirements of these tools are higher, and we have to fulfill them. There are also lots of composite materials that have completely different properties. Or there are sandwich materials where various decks are applied that need the corresponding tools. That is to say, we have to provide the special tools. So there are completely different requirements. We visited some plastics manufacturers and had a look at their processes. BWF profiles specialize in plastic profiles, pipes, boards and deep drawn parts. Their product ranges include series with up to 50,000 parts as well as one-off products. That makes 5-axis CNC cutting systems the perfect solution. Because we produce almost 8,000 profile cross-sections, the flexibility of these systems is crucial. They offer us all processing, drilling and cutting options, from polishing to gloss or matte polishing, and thus we can fulfill all of our customers' requirements. Zertex produces and develops fibrous composite materials. Because wood, plastics and composites have similar properties, Zertex has also purchased a 5-axis CNC cutting system. They use it for series production of carbon fire aircraft parts. We decided to buy a 5-axis processing system to considerably speed up our response to special customer requirements. That means being able to react immediately to smaller batches and supply the customers with the parts orders. Another advantage is that, with the 5-axis system, we can produce our own equipment that we then later use in production. BWF Profiles and Zertex, just two examples of using wood processing machines. So they're very versatile. Mr. Martin, you don't normally specifically sell your products to plastics manufacturers. You've brought a massage roller with you. How did that project start? 
Yes, that's an interesting story. The customer, the manufacturer of this product, has known Weinig for a long time from other special solutions that we developed for them. And so we were an obvious partner in this case too. It was a very simple challenge in this case, I suppose you could say a luxury challenge, because our customer was very successful with this product. It's a medical device, I won't go into any more detail about what it does. Like I say, it sold very well and the challenge was then to achieve a continuous production process. So, in one strand, piece after piece, in one work process to be able to produce the required volume. And that was the big challenge, because the material is compressible, it's foam, and gripping it with an even pressure on each side and then feeding it through the machine, and then having a high quality product at the end, that was the particular challenge here. We were very successful and our customer is very satisfied. That's good to hear. Mr. Stadi, what do you have there? Well, I've got a small motor racing part. The end user of this handy little part is Bugatti. They make cars that we won't be able to afford for a long time, regardless of how many machines we sell here at the fair. Of course, Bugatti look for special suppliers to produce these batch size 1 parts. In this case, it's Capricorn. They really produce batch size 1. So no mass-produced items at all. The challenge here is then that they have to build a piece of equipment somewhere to be able to stretch the part on the machine. The customer also produces that equipment on our machines, as well as using them for the final processing of this carbon part. It doesn't come out of the machine looking like that, obviously. There are lots of processes, from applying the carbon fibers, treating and tempering them, and then the final lacquering. It's a phenomenal part that is also very expensive. I suppose another advantage is that this user earns more money for these products than the wood industry. So that means they're willing to pay more money for their machinery than we are usually used to in the wood industry. Mr. Pigosch, you have a company logo there. What's that all about? Well, this logo was produced on one of our five-axis machines, a CNC processing system. One particular highlight here is our software which gives the customer the option of simulating the entire process in advance, thus reducing waste and lead time, generating a CNC program after construction with pretty much a single click, thereby starting production. The processing machines are of course only as good as the tools, so I come to you of course, Mr. Niemeyer. You have also brought a tool along. What's particularly crucial about tools to plastic manufacturers? It's essential that they achieve the production quality that they want. It's important that the tool doesn't break, that it achieves the feed rate speed so that the machines and the tools can be used efficiently. So I've chosen to bring along a classic tool here. That is to say, a robust tool that can be used for high-pressure laminates. But it's not just a tool. It's actually a combination of a processing and a clamping tool. Only if the clamping tool performs as it should can we guarantee the overall performance of processing tools, clamping tools and machine. And this clamping tool is special. And this clamping tool is special because it has suspension properties that the process uses to make sure that plastic surfaces are also as smooth as possible. So if we compare wood and plastics companies, what are the general differences? What do you think? Well, if we were to compare them, I suppose I would say that the difference is more in the precision, in the accuracy requirements. Because plastics companies, well, they work differently to most carpenters and interior fitters. I suppose we could say that they're even more professional. But that's not to say that there aren't lots of small companies that work with plastics. So, it's fair to say that there are parallels to wood processing companies out there. Plastic and composite material processing is a big topic here at Ligner as well, as you can see here in the following piece. 
The surprisingly versatile highlight showcases the possibilities for using woodworking machinery and tools to process plastic and composite materials. The VDMA and Deutsche Messe, in partnership with the Department for Wood and Composite Material Processing at the Institute for Machine Tools at Stuttgart University, display a range of material samples. Wood processing machines provide the option of working at high feed rates, high cutting speeds, as well as clamping large work pieces and processing materials with similar properties to wood and wood products. The similar properties are viewed as a clear advantage by machine manufacturers. We can consider the no-wood technology as uh, the same that the woodworking technology is uh, in comparison to metalworking because we got a lot of innovation and solution for metalworking in woodworking and we can transfer this kind of knowledge on the plastic, on the other no-wood, like, like, like wood material. According to estimates, the wood processing machine industry already generates 10% of its turnover with applications for plastic, composite materials and similar products. And this is set to increase. So demand is increasing and that of course brings with it new challenges that have to be solved. Where do you think the major problems are, Mr. Pigosch? The major problems are surely to do with the fact that the materials behave completely differently to wood. Of course, the biggest difference is the build-up of heat. The material reacts a lot to that, so we certainly have to work on that, on finding a way to cool the tip of the tools. Mr. Niemeyer, where do you think new solutions have to be found? New solutions have to be developed everywhere, and they are being found. For example, there are solutions for cooling the instruments internally by attaching atomized air adapters to make the process run at a cooler temperature. You have solutions for that yourself. That's an important point. Processing speeds also have to be increased in order to increase efficiency and reduce cycle rates. The tool lives have to be extended to ensure more efficiency. So that is a big set of challenges for tool manufacturers. And we're putting every effort in to find solutions using diamond-coated tools. So there are several technical challenges, as we've just heard, but also the approach to projects, Mr. Stadi. You work with lots of different sectors, as you mentioned. Do you need a different approach for the automotive industry than for the wood industry, for example? Yes, definitely. First of all, we mustn't be afraid of the automotive industry. It's being massively hyped, but they're just ordinary people as well. They're no different to other industries. That's the first thing. But we still need to take a look at the chain, from the machine supplier, or the tool, to the machine and the T1 supplier, to the end user. Because there are obviously other challenges in the industry. The automotive end user certifies their T1 supplier with audits and so on. So usually every part that they cut is subsequently tested on a measuring machine to make sure that it complies with the requirements. The measuring machine is often more expensive than the other machinery, so of course we, the machine manufacturers, are often told that something is not working properly or that their expectations are very high. We have to be prepared for that. The expectations can be fulfilled, but due care and attention has to be taken in tool technology, in spindle cooling and in deionization of the part. Those are all things that we need to be successful in the sector. Mr. Martin, you were just nodding and smiling. What do you think? Yes, I can only agree. In the plastics and composite materials industry, we basically have one major challenge, namely individuality. You know, every customer has to be viewed individually, like in the example I mentioned earlier. They were completely new challenges to us. And I think that that is the very special characteristic of the plastics and composite materials industry. You have to treat every customer individually, take their exact requirements, the specific challenges, 
challenge into account, into the entire process. That was already nicely illuminated. Everything that comes before and after. In this particular case, the example I mentioned, we looked into how the basic material is produced, to better understand how it behaves. These challenges make this sector incredibly exciting for us, but they of course pose lots of big challenges, but in turn, they give us lots of great new solutions. Excellent. So new challenges and new solutions. That sounds really great. And that brings us to the end of our program. We have a sentence here that you should please complete, and it is, processing plastic and composite materials in the future will, and I'll start with you, Mr. Niemeyer, processing plastic and composite materials in the future will, also be possible with a diverse program of tools and individual solutions for customer satisfaction with narrow tolerances. Mr. Pigosch? Plastic and composite technology will gain more and more significance at Biesa in the future. We will invest more than we already do, and we will surely be present at a number of trade fairs. Mr. Stadi, processing plastic and composite materials in the future will make machines even better, more open, more networkable. Industry 4.0 is already a bit further in those industries than in the ones that are here at this trade fair. Mr. Martin? Yes, the processing of plastic and composite materials will remain exciting in the future and will grow with new solutions and new challenges. I'm really looking forward to it. Lovely, a very nice closing statement. Thank you all very much for an enjoyable program. Thank you to you for watching. Take care and see you soon.